The other form of solar power is solar thermal electricity, which concentrates sunlight to produce heat. And, and on the system you can see, sunlight is concentrated on those tubes that run along there, and they heat a fluid which in turn uh, heats water to produce steam to generate electricity by turning a turbine. And the advantage of solar thermal electricity, or concentrated solar thermal power, as it's sometimes called, is that it is fairly cheap to store heat rather than electricity. So it can produce baseload power, 24 hours a day power. And you can store that heat in water, in an insulated tank, in a rock bed, in molten salts, in uh, splitting ammonia into nitrogen and hydrogen, in graphite blocks, there's a whole range of methods of storing heat overnight from solar thermal power and making it baseload power. Hot rock geothermal power is under development in France and in Australia. There is huge potential in this country under the Great Artesian Basin, uh, huge potential. It could be producing maybe 40 or more percent of Australia's electricity, although it's a little bit remote. So it needs to, we need to build those transmission lines up and perhaps simultaneously for hot rock geothermal and wind power and bioenergy. It's baseload power and in theory it should be very clean power because what you do is you drill a couple of holes, I'm just simplifying a bit, three to five kilometres down, so, but we have the drilling technology from the oil industry. You fracture the rock at the bottom between the two uh, wells and you do that by pumping water down under pressure. So you establish a, a link, a U-shaped link. Then um, you pump water down one hole and steam basically comes up the other and turns a turbine and generates electricity. What we really need to do is to ban new conventional coal-fired power stations and any major refurbishments. Uh, the climatologist, climatologist James Hansen is saying that. We need to fund the geographically distributed transmission system. We need to remove the subsidies to the production and use of fossil fuels, which amount to more than $10 billion a year in Australia. We need to fund urban public transport and intercity rail equally with roads. Currently, 90% of federal transport funding goes to roads. It always has, and whichever government is in power. And we need to, schemes to assist low-income earners to reduce their emissions, their energy bills. So even though the price of a unit of energy is going to go up one way or the other, we need to assist low-income earners and everyone to reduce the number of units of electricity that they actually use so that the bills are fixed. Now, I realise... What can we do? Well, sure, we can take individual action in our own homes. They're important. They set precedents and they have some educational value. But to be honest and realistically, that individual actions are nowhere near enough. Most greenhouse gas pollution in Australia comes from large industries, not directly from individuals. Uh, governments make the laws, governments collect taxation revenue, governments make the infrastructure decisions. It's no use us preaching that people shouldn't uh, use their cars if public transport is inadequate. Um, no use preaching to people that they shouldn't use electric resistance heating in their homes if they are tenants, uh, if they, uh, their home is not well insulated and um, if they have no alternatives available. So we do need government action and, and that means we need a social movement to pressure both state and federal governments to get off their backsides and actually act to reduce emissions instead of putting out the token gestures that we're seeing at present. Now, fortunately, in both the United States and Australia, we're seeing a rapid growth in social movements, nonviolent social movements that are t taking action, pressuring their governments and businesses to actually take action. And I think this is our main hope if we are to do our share in Australia to reduce emissions uh, so that other countries uh, also uh, can, uh, uh, so that we're part of that international movement. So finally, to conclude, renewable energy futures, together with energy efficiency, are our main hope at present. They're the only technologies we have 
that are commercially available that can reduce emissions from the energy sector. They um, are technologically viable and economically viable. The main barriers to renewable energy and energy efficiency come from the big greenhouse gas emitters who have enormous political influence, who are lobbying our governments to go slow on reducing emissions to delay until, uh, until the 2020s when maybe we have so-called clean coal as you know, the favoured government solution. Uh, I think this would be a disastrous mistake. We need to move now and we need a strong social movement to push our decision makers, particularly at the state and federal level, to do something. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Mark started his career in the offshore oil industry with BP Exploration in the North Sea and returned to Australia in 1992. At that time, he then operated a successful energy consultancy business with clients in Australia and in the UK, including many uh, electricity and gas utilities, large industrial customers, power generators, large and small energy technology companies. Since 2003, he's been working as a director of two businesses, operating in the fields of renewable, renewable energy and energy efficiency. So uh, a beautiful complement to a couple of the key areas that were identified by Mark just now. In 2003, he was co-founder of a wind energy company, which was established to use innovative Australian technology to select higher yielding sites for wind farms. Um, today, I'd, I'd like to talk a bit about, uh, I'll, I'll do a short plug for the company, if you'll indulge me. Um, and I noticed also that um, my name on the program is um, the, um, uh, as representing chairman um, of the Energy Committee of the Warren Centre at the University of Sydney. So I should also say that I'm a director in, uh, of that institution. Epiron is part of Conergy AG, as Eric said at the beginning, which is a renewable energy company. Um, I'll talk a bit about that. Then I'd like to uh, explain briefly what is happening in the wind power sector in Australia at the moment, particularly in New South Wales, and to elaborate a little bit on the points that Mark raised in terms of integrating renewables into the system and how can renewables work alongside everything else in the system to provide the power that we all use and our businesses and the economy in general use every day. Wind energy and photovoltaics are the areas where there has been most activity so far around the world, and particularly in Europe. Wind energy, you, you probably understand, if, if, even if you've never seen a, uh, a large-scale wind turbine. The wind blows the blades around, which directly turn an electricity generator. It's as simple as that. The technology has been known about for hundreds of years in terms of producing mechanical power, and at least 100 years in terms of generating electrical power. I was, I was thinking, in terms of where these things are happening around the world, from my company's perspective, we're about 150 people um, globally, and this is where the activity is. Um, have I got a pointer here? Yep. Um, let me see. Wind turbine, I don't know if you can see that. In the USA, there, that thing that looks like a wind turbine represents activity in the wind power generation area. This, this blue flat thing is meant to represent a set of photovoltaic panels, uh, and you'll see that the PV, a photovoltaic industry, is active in many countries there. This tank-looking thing is meant indeed to represent a tank with some liquid biofuel in it. Um, also quite big in Europe, but as I said, the balance between production, agricultural production for food and fuel is still not worked out, and the Europeans are, are backing off a bit from uh, liquid biofuels as we speak. In Australia, you'll see um, this is what I and my colleagues are working on, wind power and concentrating solar power. At the moment, those are the renewable energy technologies where we think we can survive and thrive as a business in the, in the medium term. 